So Verhanka Savannah has a number of neat zones that I refer to as cluster zones, or basically zones that have a bunch of herds of a particular species, way more than a normal neat zone should have, and I wanted to basically go over at least the ones that I'm aware of here on Verhanka, and to be honest there are probably more than I even know about, but a couple of things quickly before we get started with those. Number one is that every map is different, so you might not necessarily have these zones in the exact same places, some maps might not even have the zones at all, but in my experience, most maps have these zones. The other thing is that this video is being made on May 29th, 2021, and the game does change as time goes on, and I would not be the least bit surprised if at some point in the future, some or all these zones end up changing, so that's something to be aware of if you're watching this long after the video comes out. So with that out of our way now, we're going to start with one of the better known gemsbuckering zones on Barranca Savannah, and it's down here in the southwest. It's in a region known as the Fever Tree Forest, and actually, I think three of the zones we're going to look at today are. So there may be something up with that region, but anyway, it's at this lake, and it's quite nice that there's an outpost right at it. But I find most often, most servers have the zone right up here at the north end of the lake, and my particular map is no exception. You can see just all the gemsbuck drinking back in here, and there's even some kind of off to the side. I would say my map even probably has a lower number of total gemsbuck than some other maps, but still. There's a bunch in here, and it's a really easy spot to go and take out some gemsbuck, so we got ourselves a decent level 4 there. We'll go and claim him, and as we go over there, we'll look at the next spot that we're going to go. But if you come here between 4 and 8 a.m. during gemsbuck drink time, that's pretty much exactly what you can expect to see, so... I mentioned there are other ones here in the Fever Tree Forest. The next one we're going to go to is down here for Warthog at this particular feed zone. And much like the Gemsbug Drink Zone, this one is really easy to get to. There's the outpost down here in the Fever Tree Forest. Again, I'll zoom out so you can see exactly where it is. And you pretty much just walk over almost to the water. And this one is almost always in the exact same spot. I can't say I've joined a multiplayer server and actually found this feed zone anywhere, but pretty much exactly up here in this sort of opening. But there are just a ton of Warthog hanging out, and we've definitely shot a diamond one here on stream. There's one down here a little bit closer that looks decent sized, so I'll probably shoot that one. But this has been one of those spots, again, it's super consistent and super easy to get to. There's no reason not to go and just check it and see if there's anything good. I believe we also shot an albino female at one point. It's just been one of those spots that I like to go to and it's actually produced. And I should mention Warthog feed time being from 8 to 1300. So it's a long time to actually go and find them there. And a nice little kind of bonus to this particular zone is that there's also a huge wildebeest rest zone just beside it. So we're literally standing right where we shot the warthog. The feed zone is obviously very close to the wildebeest rest zone. And that particular rest zone is another one that's produced a lot of diamonds and rares for us. So it's a good spot to check both. I would definitely recommend that. We'll grab our warthog real quick. And then we're actually going to another warthog feed zone that's much like this one where there's just a ton of them that use one small area. Now the tough part with this particular zone is just the range and having grass render in. The last one, there was no tall grass, but for this one there is. It's actually the same spot as the Cape Buffalo zone that we're going to look at here in a minute, just up on the road here along the way to the Lookout Tower. I don't know how to pronounce the region, but basically, you look down there in the southeast, you can see the Lookout Point. We've probably run too close, so we've got them to render in, but then we have to actually go backwards to get the grass to go away, and then we can just see the amount of Warthog that are up there. Now we went here not that long ago, if I remember correctly there weren't any really big ones, there was a 4, so that may be the one to go for, but if we just look across you can see how many Warthogs were spotting, and it's like this pretty much on every multiplayer server, just a ton of them in that one spot. We'll try to make a shot on this one. It's a tough one to make at that range, but we definitely got into a lung, and I do actually have a tent up there, specifically now because of the render glitch. Now I mentioned that at some point in the future, these zones may not be there, and hopefully the render glitch is a thing that goes away. But for now, being able to fast travel up there and ensure the animals don't run out of render is actually kind of key. So if you're using this zone specifically for a warthog, right now at least with the render glitch going on, I would recommend sticking a tent there to be able to run up there quickly and avoid them leaving your render. So we now managed two gold warthog from that, and we're basically going to come back to this exact same spot for Cape Buffalo now, and... Pretty much the same thing, but with obviously a lot bigger animals that can't quite hide in the grass as well. So if you come up here, between 12 and 1600 in the afternoon, this is pretty much what you can expect to see, and the fact that we're just kind of getting them to render in is why they're all walking around right now. But they'll start to feed up there on the hill, and this is another spot that just produced a ton of rares and diamonds. Actually specifically diamonds, including our biggest one not even that long ago. 
it's just a really good spot and I'd recommend checking it pretty much in every multiplayer server and definitely on your single player map and seeing if you have anything good there. There was one good size level 7. The one issue with the Cape Buffalo is that sometimes it's tough to get shots off at the particular one that you want. Of course you can go up there and get closer, but if you're trying to go for a long shot, sometimes you get the other ones blocking you, so we'll probably just shoot that level 6, just to hopefully get him down. And again, kind of goes back to the point I made earlier with the tent. We can fast travel and get over there well before he leaves our render, and that allows him to stay spawned and not have the render glitch take place. I definitely do find that to be a useful little thing to do. I actually managed a gold out of that one as well. And now we're going to go down to the last kind of cluster zone that I'm aware of currently on Varunga Savannah, and that is the most recent one that I've actually discovered. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that there were three in the Fever Tree Forest region, and this is the third of those. It's this cuter rest zone right here, and I do actually find going from this particular outpost down is easier, because you kind of end up up on this hill where you can see downwards, and because it is a rest zone, it's not quite as easy to spot them. But if we start to look around, you kind of see just these little areas where Kudu are resting in their own little clusters. There's several herds that use this area, and it's the area where we got the Melanissa Kudu not that long ago, so I would imagine if we sit here and call, we'll actually have more come in that we can't see. So that's exactly what we're going to do, just to see if any bigger ones actually pop up. But like I said, there's a bunch of herds that just rest in this little area that sometimes get pretty well hidden. And the more that we call, the more you see just a ton of Kudu coming out of the brush. There's a pretty tiny one there. None of these look particularly large, but it does give a much better idea of just how many kudu are here. I mean, we're spooking a bunch of them to the right. There are just a ton in this area. Now, I don't see any big ones. Seems my map doesn't have any super uh, high-scoring animals in any of these zones at the moment. But in the past, we've had, I think, in all but maybe the Gemsbuck zone, good animals in all of them. There must be a lion passing through down there as well. That's kind of a good one. If we can get a shot in there, we might go for that level 4. That'll work to bring him down. Pretty much the same size as the melon that we shot. And now having brought that guy down, we'll at least have a gold out of each zone. I believe Kudu do rest multiple times throughout the day, but this particular zone, the time that we're here, is between 10 and 1400. And that's when I've been here in the past and had success before, so that's what I would stick with. We'll go ahead and grab our gold Kudu here. Solid 27.8. And yeah. I would really recommend checking out all these spots, again both in single player and multiplayer. They're really good spots, and for the most part they're pretty easy to check. They're not that time consuming, and they definitely can have really good rewards just waiting in them, especially if they're areas that haven't been checked in the past. By the way, there's another max weight track there for the Kudu, so there's good ones in there, they're just kinda tough to get to. But definitely, maybe setting up a tree stand or a tripod in this area could help, and that's probably something I'm gonna do going forward. As I mentioned, this is a recently discovered zone for me at least. So, something to actually experiment with going forward. But anyway, I wanted to show those zones to you guys, so if you weren't aware of them, you can check them out. And hopefully they help some of you get some good trophies. But that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.